Have you ever had that privilege where you wake up one day and then you realize you probably have an example of one of the nicest any things you've ever had the opportunity to handle? YouTube, Lock and Load Ninjas, interwebs at large. I've been waiting for this day for months, and uh, finally we get to have it because the Chambers Custom Fat Working Man's Gun, P-H-A-T, W-M-G, C, has made it here. There you have it. That's it in all of its glory, all of its elegance. One of the things about getting a chamber's gun, for example, is all the stuff that comes with it, all the paperwork, all the documentation, which is unlike anything I've ever seen before. It's, it's, it's a lot easier if I just show you. So with each chamber's custom gun, when it's shipped to you, it's not only shipped to you in its bag that you're getting, it also comes, it's actually all coming in a box because you get a folder of paperwork and, uh, some other stuff to go with it. You get uh, their business card, of course, and then you get the obsessively accurate, reliable, and beautiful pistols pamphlet that uh, will lead you to wanting to have more Chambers guns. If you order magazines, which the magazines that this uh, gun ships with are MBX, MBX Extreme to be exact, you find them at mbxextreme.com, you uh, you get the listing of exactly how the magazine is set up and for what, with what kind of follower and all these other things, mag, catch, height. And then, and this is where we make a radical departure, we get this. Let's see if I can do this without giving away too much info. You get a listing of every part that went into this gun which this gun is serial number quintuple zero two. So you get a listing of all of this. If you ever have to send the gun in for service or anything, they will have this on file to know exactly what is in the gun. That's sort of a step that I've never seen before. And then you get a letter from Joe Chambers himself thanking you for this. Uh, explaining a few things to you like it's always fun for us to be involved with a special project like Freddy, which is uh, what this gun is called. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to be a part of it with you. So it, this is not just a form, a, uh, a form that he sends out. This is actually a personal message with Joe Chambers signature block and Eric Mercier, who was the actual builder of this gun, his signature block trying to uh, <clears throat> multitask here as I get ready for the radio broadcast tonight. Um, I think another thing about the Chambers pistol is that the, the features of this gun, the way they're done, and the, 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 the subtle elegance of the gun, that's a lot easier if I just show you that too, I think. When you pull one of these out and you inspect it the first time, there's a few things that occur. And they were with me the whole length, whole length and whole way. The uh, first thing about this gun that makes it uh, as unique as it's ever going to be is what's engraved underneath the, uh, the ejection port, which is the German spelling of my last name. I don't know why I wanted it on there. Uh, because... Uh, my German forebear came over here during revolutionary times. He didn't actually come of his own accord. He was sort of Shanghai. I think he was drunk. And they brought him over here to fight in the Revolutionary War. And he just didn't. He, had, he deserted and came to the uh, colonial side. But um, the way they engraved it and everything is also sort of a throwback. The font sort of a throwback to that era and that time. 
the slide stop, the, uh, the safety, the beaver tail safety. All of these are highly polished and blued, which against the matte finish sort of sets it off. It's, it's not something I would have ever thought to do. This front sight is actually blended, actually blended into the top of the slide. And I mean, that looks like it's just one piece, one, one piece of metal. Front sight uniquely mounted in front of the Holosun 507C. Um, it does allow for co-witnessing just the bare top of it, which uh, you don't want a whole lot of the, uh, you don't want a whole lot of the standard sight in the, uh, in the red dot. Stipple job, I think they do that in house. I'm almost certain they do it in house. It is such a good stipple job that I'm constantly having to, uh, when I carry it, which I have been carrying it, uh, I have lots of fibers and everything that stick to it, but I, you know, it's not that big of a deal to pick them off. The action of the pistol is just about as subtly sophisticated as one could be made. Now, there's a lot of things about this pistol that uh, a lot of people, if, when a lot of people look at a gun, they are hung up on price or they're hung up on uh, name brand or whatever. And when I tell people that I have a Chambers gun, a lot of people don't even know what that means unless they listen to the show. I know what it means. But, but let me make th one thing perfectly clear. This, to me, uh, I will not compare this to any other gun I own uh, for, the, for the very basic reason that um, this one has been taken. Right now, I can't think of any technology that exists out there in gunsmithing that could make, take this gun any further. I, I just don't know of any. Um, and you'll see what I'm talking about when I'm pulling the trigger on it. Um, it is nine millimeter, so the first thing everybody's going to say is, well, you know, that doesn't have a lot of recoil to it, but when you see the range, when you see what we did at the range, and we were using uh, what I think was probably the wrong ammo. I think it was, I think the, the ammo was sort of light. I think I had a bad batch. So the fact that this functioned the way it did was a uh, very eye opening because it was just flawless. But I'm, we'll finish this up when we get back. Let's, uh, let's go take a look at what a really fine hand fitted piece of machinery can do on the firing range. I, I kind of think that speaks for itself. Um, there are a lot of people that like the 1911, 2011, and this is referred to as a 2019 model at uh, Chambers Custom. They, they like the platform, and there's various really good examples of them out there. I mean, Joe Chambers would be the first one to, to name names if you wanted to. But I'm aware of how much time went into this gun, and I'm aware of some of the process that went into this gun. And this is a gun that was put together for me in the same, in the same manner that I, if I went to Savile Row and I was looking for a, a suit, same manner. They're only going to build 25 of these. And... Uh, I mean, that, make, that, that makes us a very rare beast indeed. As a matter of fact, I think all 25 are already spoken for. So, uh, yeah. 
For those of you that would say, well, are you going to compare it with this and are you going to compare it with that? I think that does a, it, it's a disservice to this gun and to the guns going up against it, you know, quite honestly. Uh, this is not a production gun. This is not a production gun. This is a, this is a gun where uh, they're going to take it and painstakingly turn it from what it from the raw materials into the gun that it becomes. And for that very reason, um, it for me, it just is in a class by itself. It doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't make it any more adequate, right? But what you are getting with a gun like this is the percentages that makes this gun better than some of the production 1911, 2011s that are out there today. It's a really small percentage, but it's a really painful percentage to go after. A lot of labor involved in it, a lot of detail involved in it, a lot of micro adjusting, micro measurements, micro grindings. I mean, you name it. I mean, look at, I mean, I never would have thought of this. Look at the end of this barrel. This is polished. Everything on the end of that barrel is polished. It's uh, the, the slide, everything. The slide fitting. The way it's sprung, the springing of the gun, I, I didn't understand this, but uh, first time Joe Chambers saw me shoot in slow motion, he was telling me that what was happening was due to the spring of the gun, as far as the way the gun comes back down. And um, I never thought about that. But this is the kind of eye a craftsman like Joe brings to it. And uh, I mean, Eric, Eric Mercer, Brandon Wolfel, Wolfler, I believe that's his name. I like Brandon. I like Eric. I like them both, Eric and Brandon. Um, they all have that eye. They all know what they're trying to achieve. And there's a lot of companies out there that put guns together. They're very, very good guns in their own right. You know who they are. I mean, some of them sponsor me, SDI, Nighthawk. But this one stands alone. So you can check them out at Chambers Custom Guns. Um, this coming weekend, I'm going to a place called Exodus Leather, which makes uh, very fine leather holsters. This is the one that Joe Chambers uses. And I'm going to shoot a video of that. And I'm going to go get three leather holsters made by another master craftsman. One of them, <laughs> he told me about his, his name is Carl Collins. One of them is a hand-dyed blue alligator skin holster. So, not going to be putting this one in Kydex. There'll be more to come of this as we go along. Joe's going to send me some guns to, uh, to evaluate. The next build for me is going to be basically this gun with a Chambers custom designed compensator on it. I don't expect there to be any movement at all from that one. I've seen, I've already seen the, uh, the prototype shooting. So it's pretty much a standing still proposition. If you like this kind of content, and I hope you do, give me a thumbs up. Maybe think about subscribing. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, I know what's going on right now. I'm not really going to mention it. I don't need to. You know what's going on. Um, we're in this together. Uh, things shouldn't get bad, but if they do get bad, we're in this together. And, uh, you know, keep the faith. I mean, it's every generation faces something. And I guess this is ours in the 20, in 2020. So I'll be back next week. I am out of here.